basic problem is that we are living in a virtual reality. We're living in a totally controlled environment, an environment that has been, been created by mass media. Now, many people, especially young people, accept unquestioningly the reality that is presented by the media. Popular culture, movies, television, music carry messages about how society works and how people should behave. And so entertainment is not value-free. It has ideological content. It presents a worldview that influences the people who watch the programming. There is a reason why television networks and, and, and the music industry, the various companies, they have programming departments. The programming that we are constantly assaulted by throughout our life conditions us, it programs us to a particular worldview. Now, we may consider it normal because we were born into the system of lies and deception. In fact, deception has become part of the social framework of society. And because we were born into this situation and our parents were born into it and have suffered from it, we don't know any better. And so we don't necessarily see things as they are. We see things as we are. Now, there are two primary means by which people are manipulated and controlled. One is very simple, very basic, and that is uh, simply the control of information and the control of, uh, if we don't have all of the facts uh, uh, of, uh, on any particular topic, then our judgment is going to be no better than the quality of our information. And in spite of the fact that we have an information overload through all the information that's available on the Internet and, and other sources, we have to be have the presence of mind to be able to evaluate the information that we have available. Uh, it, and it's a matter of having to dig through and determine uh, what's true, what, what are the lies, what are the half-truths, under that one basic heading, information control, where there has been a, a long-held consolidation of ownership of the different medias, uh, press, publishing, film, music, television, consolidated ownership into the hands of very few individuals and the multinational corporations. Today, there are a half a dozen multinational corporations that are controlling the information and entertainment choices that people have. Working as an editor, it was easy to see how simple it is to change the meaning of an event or change the meaning of what someone says through editing. And so uh, I was very well aware of how plastic and uh, moldable uh, media reality was. But I, I didn't fully appreciate the extent to which we are all manipulated and controlled by media, including those people who work in it. So you, using television as the prime example uh, of how uh, mental programming and mind control works, television it is the most powerful weapon of psychological warfare in history. And yet, but uh, television, for, for many people, is a member, a member of the family in the household. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's the primary member. Yes. It, it runs the household. Yes, well, not, not only that, but it's the primary source of information, and the television, in effect, represents an altar, a religious altar that the nation is worshipping before. Many people don't think about the things that affect them subconsciously because generally they don't know what to look for until someone comes around and starts pointing these things out to them and then they can see how we are all influenced by unseen forces without our conscious awareness. In fact, the, the ultimate control is to control people without their conscious awareness. Again, television is a prime example. Think back to whenever you have observed young children or older adults sitting watching television. They have this glassy-eyed, vacant look in their eyes because they are in a trance state, in a hypnotic state of mind. This is very important, very significant, that the medium of television has the capacity to do this, and it doesn't matter what you're watching. The flickering effect of the, uh, the television image, uh, although it appears to be static and stationary, it is actually flickering. We don't see it consciously, but subconsciously, the repeating visual pattern of the flicker induces the trance state. And that's the 
basic uh, principle behind uh, hypnotic uh, programming is that you uh, get the uh, subject to focus the attention of the conscious mind on one of the five senses. So in the case of watching television, we're talking about the sense of sight and the flickering uh, uh, image. Uh, in the case of sound, uh, uh, any repeating sound pattern will induce the trance state. Now, why this is important is that we are more suggestible to mental programming during the state of mind than at any other time. We're very vulnerable to m manipulation at this time. first order of business for a propagandist or an advertiser is to create the circumstances that will induce a state of mind that is favorable to the reception of their message. And that state of mind is the hypnotic state of mind, making television extremely important in this whole process of creating a, a unified mindset among the entire population. Have you ever bought something and then later on wondered why did you buy it? I think we've all had that kind of yeah. experience. Quite a few times. Well, that, that, that's a, a common everyday uh, illustration of being triggered to make a purchase based on a conditioned response that has been built into us to have a preference for a particular product. In fact, that is the whole point of programming, whether it be by an advertiser or a propagandist. Uh, there's really no difference between the two. One's uh, selling products, the other is selling ideas. The whole point is to to build into us a conditioned response where we will respond automatically without thinking with a preference for a particular idea or a preference for a particular product. And that, that is the whole point of programming. If you think about it, whenever you hear news broadcasters speak, you, you realize that regardless of their ethnic background, whether they be black, white, Hispanic, or Oriental, they, they all have a similar manner of speaking. They have a speech pattern that is associated with the dissemination of true factual information mm -hmm. on the news broadcast. Their speech pattern is similar to the pattern speech of a hypnotist. The news broadcaster looks directly into the camera and into the eyes of the viewer. Another hypnotic technique. Mm -hmm. The newscaster is an authority figure, encouraging the acceptance of the information. Hi, I'm Fox San Antonio's Jessica Headley. And I'm Ryan Wolf. Our, Our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to, to serve, serve our, our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso Las Cruces communities. Eastern Iowa communities. Mid-Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about trouble and trying to be responsible one side of the news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. 
Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control the exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 People, uh, uh, one, will accept information that comes from an accepted and respected authority. And then the repetition of the information over and over and over again is what uh, 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 builds that conditioned response so that whenever they are presented with the information again, then uh, they'll accept it automatically w w without uh, thinking about it. Do you think that the media is complicit in, in sort of the mind control aspect? Do you think that they are, because I'm a firm believer that the media is completely controlled. Yes. Okay. Yes, and uh, that's my feeling as well, in my experience, uh, that the media has become the, uh, the fourth branch of government. It is. And if you called Bill, you got him. If you want George, I'll give you another number. Okay. Uh, I'm curious as to where, if, and how the Church of Scientology fits into the Illuminati. Church of Scientology doesn't fit into the Illuminati. Church of Scientology was an Office of Naval Intelligence Mind Control Experiment. Uh, L. Ron Hubbard was an officer in the Office of Naval Intelligence. Um, in other words, uh, if you go to track. if you go to their uh, major conventions, you will see that all the high up muckety mucks wear uh, naval uniforms. <laughs> well, uh, you answered my question, and they'll hate me for that, but it's the truth, and I, I, don't, I flat, I don't care if they hate me. There are those that live their lives in victimology, and that's a word that's in the encyclopedia we all know. Instead of a new word I'm about to coin into the realm and introduce today, that could change the whole future of human destiny if it's adopted. And we've put a lot of key coins out in the mind war, in the soul war, and the destiny war. And that's victoriology. So many people I know, so many people I love, define themselves by the attacks they're under and define themselves by how they're victims and, oh, look at me, I'm a baby bird, come to the nest and vomit in my mouth. They never want to leave the nest and the millennials don't own anything. They don't want to own anything. They want communism. They don't even know that communism will work them like slaves 18 hours a day. But they don't care because they're babies and we never pushed them out of the nest. And I have people that are close to me that I love who I just can't get out of the victimology because that's the paradigm inflicted on them. So I am coining the term victoriology. Instead of being a victim, be a victor. And to be a victor, you have to decide 
If somebody punches you in the face, that don't feel too bad. You got to stop caring when things are hard because that's what makes you stronger instead of weaker. Because it's that mental capacity to stop giving in to fear that activates the genes, that activates everything there is in your soul and your future and your destiny. Those people in Washington, D.C., are they've got to be children of Satan. If there's a Satan in this world or in this universe, those people in Washington, D.C. have to be their children. Because Satan, Lucifer, is the great deceiver, the great liar, and uh, <laughs> that's all they do in Washington, D.C., is lie. They lie to each other. They lie to their family. They lie to us. They lie to the world. Their promises mean nothing. Also in Washington, D.C. is a building called the Pentagon, which houses the Magi. For the senior ranks of the military, there is made up in that circle of men a secret order founded by George Washington called the Knights of the Golden Circle. Its first chapter was formed among the officers who had served with George Washington during the Revolutionary War. Most of them were also Freemasons. A Pentagon, ladies and gentlemen, is but a very thin disguise for a pentagram. That's right, for a pentagram. For a Pentagon is made up of the lines drawn from the tips of the points of the pentagram, or the five-pointed star, to form a pentagram. Within every pentagon is a pentagram. Just in case you weren't aware of that. The language of the initiates the pentagram is also known as the star of light when it represents or symbolizes the regenerate man or initiate. The holy pentagram, our star of the Magi, according to Elphus Levi, the great initiate of France, was known to the French Gnostic school as the blazing star. The sign of the intellectual omnipotent autocracy are spiritually enlightened masters known amongst the adepts as the Magi. The star of the Magi is the Word made flesh, and according to the direction of its rays, this absolute symbol represents good or evil, order or disorder, the saving lamb of Ormond and St. John, or the accursed goat of Mendes. It symbolizes initiation or profanation. It is at once Lucifer or Vesper, the morning or evening star. It is Mary or Lilith, victory or death, light or darkness. When the pentagram elevates two of its points, it, like the reversed triangle, represents Satan or the goat of the mysteries. When it elevates the one point, it is that star of light representing the Savior, goodness, virtue, adoration, reverence. And by Savior, they do not mean Jesus the Christ. They mean the Christ within, the God in man, the intellect that will ultimately make man God. The pentagram is the figure of the human body with its four limbs and a single point representing the head. 
The human figure with the head downward naturally represents a demonic force, intellectual overturning, misuse of the intellect, disorder, and final insanity. In the magic of the Magi, the hidden science of the occultists, it is a veritable law of the three worlds. The pentagram is an absolute sign, old as history, and more than history, exercises an incalculable influence over souls. The sign of the pentagram is also called the sign of the macrocosm, and represents what the Kabbalists call microprospos. A complete understanding of the pentagram offers man the key to the two worlds. It is the absolute in philosophy and science. The ancient magi drew the sign of the pentagram on their doorsteps to protect them against evils and to seek the help of all that is good. The G, which ancient Freemasons placed in the center of the blazing star, signified gnosis and generation. It also symbolized the two sacred words, at the same time having reference to the grand architect or universal builder. All the mysteries of the Magi, all the symbols of the Gnosis, all the figures of occultism, all the Kabbalistic keys of prophecy are summed up, ladies and gentlemen, in the sign of the pentagram, which was pronounced by Paracelsus, the greatest and most potent of all signs. Those who paid little heed to the sign of the cross tremble at the sight of the star of the microcosm. And this was taken from the preface of Nidor Priestess of the Magi or Blazing Star by Dr. J.T. Bettiero, former Supreme Grand Preceptor of the Magi. How about that? I bet that made you stop and think, didn't it? If this is a Christian nation, why is there an obelisk representing the phalus of Osiris in Washington, D.C.? Why, when you stand in the rotunda of the Capitol building and look straight up at the inside of the dome, do you see a painting of George Washington riding in the chariot being pulled by the horses across the heavens as Apollo, the god of the sun. And why is it that around this big painting of George Washington and the chariot of Apollo are pictured all the old gods of the Roman pantheon? Mercury, Zeus, all of them, ladies and gentlemen. And why is there a huge pentagon hiding in its structure the greatest occult power known to man, the pentagram? And why are the streets shaped by, like the compass and the square? And all of the other symbology that exists there I think you'd better wake up, ladies and gentlemen, for there has always been a secret destiny of America, and it has never been what you have always seemed to think. America has always been headed and directed and guided by the hand of the Illuminati. It was formed for the purpose of giving the common man for the first time in the history of the world real freedom, and once that revolutionary effect reverberated around the world. It toppled the kings and queens and princes from their thrones exactly as it was designed to do. And now they are in the process of going about their business of taking that freedom back from the common man and cementing their ties that they have made in the power structure of all the nations of the world to dissolve all the existing religions, all existing nation-states, to shackle the mob and bring about their final victory, their utopian socialist world, 
government which they call the Golden Dawn, the New World Order, the New Age. That moment of silence, ladies and gentlemen, is to let at least some of what you heard tonight sink in. For it had better sink in, and you had better wake up very quickly. For you've been had. We've all been had. By those whom we believed in and trusted, who never, ever, not once believed are trusted in us. And all the while have been about completing the great work, the grand experiment. They believe that the end justifies the means. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that they will not do to accomplish their end. including blowing up more federal buildings and more trade centers and burning and murdering more church members as they did in Waco, Texas. There is nothing that they will not do to accomplish their goal, including, ladies and gentlemen, preparing you with a string of propaganda that there are missing atomic bombs in the world, some as small as a suitcase. And once they have prepared you for the proper length of time, if they believe there is no other way to disarm the people of America and bring about the totalitarian state that they want, they will, and I tell you this, they will, and you can bet on it, you can take it to the bank, they will detonate an atomic bomb in an American city. Good night. And God bless each and every single one of you. And may God reach down in His big, endless bucket of mercy and save this republic and its people.